Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today I'm revisiting Mono Green Elves updated with Modern Horizons 3 and I'm recording this during the preview event for Modern Horizons 3 so thanks again to Wizards for having me. And the Elves got quite a few upgrades here with Priest of Titania being the main one, a two-mana elf that taps for green for each elf on the battlefield. Also counts the opponent's elves so it gets pretty spicy in the mirror match but for the most part just a cheaper version of Archdruid even though it doesn't pump the team, the mana ability is what's most powerful about it. And then we also get to play with a Wirewood Symbiote. Not an elf, but it does synergize with elves as we can return an elf we control to its owner's hand to untap target creature only once each turn. Can also be activated during the opponent's turn, which means you can sometimes chum block with an elf and then send it back to your hand so it doesn't die. But the most relevant application of course is untapping Priest of Titania or Elvish Archdruid, so we can keep making a ton of mana in one turn and kind of combo off from there. And then the latest addition here is Eladamri, which is a 3-mana 3-3, replaces Realmwalker, as we can cast any creatures off the top of our deck, not only Elves, which is now relevant with Symbiote in the deck. And then sometimes we can also put a creature from our hand onto the battlefield, probably more relevant if you're playing a build with Crater Hoof Behemoth, which we could also play in this deck, but I decided not to. So this can be a nice card advantage engine, letting us play a bunch of Elves in the same turn, which of course takes full advantage of the mana from Priest and Archdruid. And then at one mana we've got some of the usual suspects, Solanar Elves, Elvish Mystic, and then a Shepherd making our stuff uncountable, and then eventually also a Finisher that can pump up our team, as the 5-5 five five Dinosaurs still get additional plus one plus one from Archdruid, as well as from the Leaf Crown Divisionary, which is also a card draw engine. If we have a lot of mana, we can cast Elves and then pay an extra green to draw a card. And then to help go wide, make lots of elf tokens, which in turn will make a lot of mana with Priest of Titania. We've got the Elvish Warmaster, which also gives us a nice finishing ability for 7 mana, giving the team plus 2 plus 2 and Death Touch. Can maybe activate it multiple times in the same turn as well. And then I'm also playing the full set of Sky Shroud Lookout, which kind of replaces Elvish Visionary in this slot. As it enters the battlefield, we seek an elf card, which is a little bit different than just drawing a card. So that can ensure that we hit more action spells. And then uh, it also has reach, so that's also potentially relevant when facing the blue-red wizard deck, for instance. So this can also be very nice when picked back up with a symbiote. If we have a lot of mana but no card draw engine, then just picking up the lookout turn after turn can also find more elves and eventually overwhelm the opponent. So those also have excellent synergy. And then of course we're also a collected company deck. You could also debate whether or not we should include Court of Calling in this list, especially now with Priest of Titania being a nice cheap creature that you want to tutor up. We could also splash black for some elves or maybe for Tyvar, which also has excellent synergy with Priest of Titania as you can immediately activate it and maybe bring it back out of the graveyard. So there's definitely a lot of ways you can build an elf deck, but I think Priest of Titania and Symbiote will be a staple in this archetype going forward. And then a mana base gets to play with Castle Garenbrick, which can give us a lot of extra mana to cast our spells or to activate various abilities like the Warmaster or Shepherd. So I do like maxing out on Castle Garenbrick, which is also why it still need a lot of forests, so we make sure that the castle comes into play untapped. Since a deck like this is happy to keep one or two land hands if we have enough mana acceleration, so then having lands enter tapped is pretty bad for us. So four castle, 13 forests, and then only have room for one cavern of souls, since we also have the shepherd to make our elves uncounterable anyway. And then there's a Nykthos, which can also maybe give us a bit of a mana boost if we have enough devotion on the battlefield, and then Boseju for a bit of extra interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Mystic into Archroot, hopefully. If Mystic dies, we're in a bit of trouble. It's going to be an Ornithopter, Springleaf Drum, so... Portable Hole, yeah, that's a good one. Take out Mystic, and now we don't have much going on, except for Lookout. Find a Warmaster, at least. Is our opponent on a blue-white affinity deck? Can expect to see some black-red variants now as well. And I see Kozilek's Unsealing, a payoff for playing a bunch of those 7-mana artifact cards with affinity. And yeah, now... We've got a pretty slow start, so the Unsealing might take over. Opponent already has four artifacts on the battlefield after the explosive Ornithopter plus Springleaf. Sentinel can maybe tanks our company, but is still manageable. 
And now Halo Hopper into Mirror Enforcer, so unsealing draw three. And we could see a bunch more of those. The new Frogmere Enforcer. And our opponent's done. All right, luckily found a land, so we can play Archdruid. And then next turn we can continue to cast our spells. Although we are also facing quite a bit of damage here. Fine to trade for a Halo Hopper. And a portable hole can answer Warmaster. Yeah, that's a good one. And another one. All right, so now Archer doesn't look nearly as impressive. Find a Symbiote. So can play Eladomri. This taps for two, play Symbiote. Hope there's a cheap elf on top. And then I can return Eladomri to make one mana. That's not too exciting. Or we can cast Collected Company, but then I'm gonna have to pay the Sentinel tax. Yeah, I guess so it goes. I'll just pass. Another Mirror Enforcer to draw three. So yeah, the opponent's draw came together beautifully. Not sure if they're also running any counter spells here. But uh, we're probably too far behind regardless. Another Sentinel, I'll respond. And hit Archdruid's Visionary. And portable hole number four. At least it's the last one. I was gonna take eight anyways. And let's see what we can do now. So step one, play Eladomri. I think I have to tap Nykthos. A land on top means we probably want to collect that company here. Opponent gets to draw two. Find Priest Archdruid. Make some mana, play Elf. Still have Symbiote to untap an Archdruid here as well. So we can keep making mana. So untap Archdruid. Returning probably a one mana Elf here. And then play a Lenor Elves before tapping Archdruid. Play Visionary. We have two more Symbiotes we can play. So that represents a bunch more mana. But uh, first I guess we'll draw into this castle. Play Symbiote off the top. And now we can return the Lookout for more value. Draw the company. Find another visionary. So yeah, we're definitely going off here. I have 30 cards left, so not in too much trouble. So we can play Lookout. Draw, see what's on top. If it's a creature, we can decline. And then play another Symbiote. Untap, pick up, Lookout. Or maybe I'll go for one mana elf at this point. Tap for mana, play Visionary. 
Might want to play Warmaster first. And find Shepherd, which we can just play off the top. Then ideally we place symbiotes, so we can still uh, make a bunch of mana here. And then we can also maybe pump the team in the opponent's turn. There's no Crater Hoof Behemoth I can uh, draw towards, but I also wouldn't have too many creatures that can attack anyways, so... Can play another Shepherd. Warmaster first. And hope our opponent doesn't have some sort of mass bound spell. Maybe the new Ugin's spell for three mana, if they cast a seven mana spell afterwards, becomes a Cyclonic Rift. So that would be a concern. But I'll take another Reach creature here. Alright, that's probably enough for now. Could still cast a Collected Company. I guess I'll play another priest. Alright, fine, may as well put my whole deck on the battlefield. Then we can use Warwood Symbiote in the opponent's turn as well to still cast company if needed. As per Sentinels, acceptable. Halo Hopper is as well, and our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Mystic into Archdruid. Opponent's got a Gigantha as companion. Well, let's see what we're up against. Blue-red. And a Wavebreaker. So maybe a Wizard aggro deck. So those decks tend to have a few burn spells for Archdruid. Either way, we can play Company next turn if Mystic survives. And there's the Wizard's Lightning. And maybe another burn spell, alright, fair enough. So no company next turn. And take three from Wavebreaker. Not a bad pickup here. Can play the Lookout and play Mystic. And then double companies, nice card advantage in a matchup where the opponent has a bunch of removal. Slakeshot Showoff makes a lot of sense. And they probably have a way to enable Prowess here, so it's a little risky to block. Tune the narrative, so another energy card to complement their uh, Galvanic Discharge. So they've got a bit of an energy package. Okay, so... Could main phase company for worried about a counter spell. I think it's reasonable to wait, I don't expect a deck like this to have too many counters. But uh, 
yeah, waiting has the advantage of keeping the opponent guessing. And then I guess the Mystic can attack. Although it is true that if I hit a Wirewood Symbiote, I could have maybe untapped the Mystic and then still cast something else afterwards. Opponent with a Balmor, also pay off for casting Instance and Sorceries. And then if we find a Lord, we can maybe trade the Lookout for the Slickshot Show-Off. And uh, I guess we could also now double block with two lookouts. That seems reasonable. And then grab Priest to make a lot of mana. Priest plus Symbiote's also a pretty decent combo here. So we fall to seven. And uh, yeah, we gotta get on the board here. Can start with Visionary, play Warmaster, pay the one. Or we can go Warmaster into Visionary to make more tokens. And then if I company in the opponent's turn, we get more tokens from the Warmaster. Although at that point, I might be better off just playing the Archdruid. So we'll pass a turn. Hope they can burn us out. Expressive iteration triggers Balmore. The reach on the lookout here, probably the only reason we're still in the game compared to just an Elvish Visionary, which draws a card. So we'll company. And not the best hits, Symbiote and Lanor Elves. Pick up probably just a uh, Lanor Elves or Elvish Mystic. Yeah, thanks to the floating man, I'll still have enough Elves to actually do this. Otherwise, I would have been one mana short. And now we can line up a better block on the Wavebreaker. Something along these lines. But it's just going to be Wizard Slining to the face, and with Symmetry Sage and Balmor's ability, that's still lethal here. Alright, that's too bad. We found a pretty sweet line, and we would have been able to untap and likely attack for lethal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Mystic into Archdruid is a promising start. And if they remove the Mystic, we still have Visionary as a decent turn 2 play. Facing the Eldrazi deck with a new Devourer of Destiny, giving the opponent some card selection. So we could see the new land that taps for double colorless on turn 1. Opponent getting rid of Ether Hub and Solar Transformer, so it might also be an energy combo deck. And another energy card here. So yeah, it does seem to be a more combo-oriented deck. So Archroot may eat one of the red removal spells, but still worth a shot. And there's a Solar Transformer. Okay. So next up, can uh, play Lenor Elves and then tap the Archroot. Could also play Visionary, play Elves and then pay the one to draw a card. And then we can still play company with Archroot. Okay, and then Nykthos can also make some extra mana next turn. Probably no need to company right now unless we're afraid of a counter spell, but then a sweeper is a reason to maybe wait. Since we can float four mana, let the sweeper resolve and then cast company. Opponent might also be on an Aetherworks Marvel deck and a Galvanic Discharge. Okay, so could be worth it to company response, because if we hit another Lord, we force him to waste more energy here. 
And we did indeed hit some lords. So another archer it makes sense, and then probably just another leaf crowned visionary. Could also get Shepherd as a win condition, because if that resolves I can just activate it next turn and attack for lethal. Is it possible I don't need the extra card draw? Warmaster is also decent, so yeah, some nice options for sure. So that's now 4 energy to take out the Archdruid. Get to untap, and uh, yeah, just activate Shepherd here. Should be good enough. And smash. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, it's a one lander, but with two one mana elves. And hopefully Priest of Titania will get to make a lot of mana here. Red black with looting. And we see buried alive, so likely to combine with Arclight Phoenix to bring those back. But might also have some other combo with the Zell's Conscripts now. Okay, either way, we can go Priest of Titania plus another one mana elf. And then next turn start making tokens with a Warmaster to make even more mana. Which we can then sink into Heladamri to play Elves off the top, or maybe Shepherd to pump the team. For now another looting. Fable of the Mirror Breaker discarded. Can kind of combo in a similar way to the Zell's Conscripts untapping a creature. And then we'll stick to the plan here. Warmaster into... could play Shepherd first and then tap Priest of Titania. And see what we're working with. Play the Lookouts, find another Elf. And we can play Priest. And hit for one. Okay, so next turn we might be able to activate Warmaster for lethal already with double priest. Hopefully there's no board wipe, just a fable. That's acceptable. So, could just activate Shepherd as well here. Shepherd, and then Warmaster twice. Should do the trick. Alright, not bad. Showing the power of Priest of Titania when it does survive. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, we've got a Keeper. Mystic into Archdruid. Facing the uh, blue-red energy deck once again. Now our opponent's on the play, so they might have a better hand. Turn to Transformer for ramp. We've got an Archdruid, which is unlikely to survive. Could have also opted for a couple more Mystics. And there we see the powerful new Amped Raptor. Casting a free Galvanic Discharge, yeah. Taking out Archdruid, giving them some spare energy. And a Priest of Titania. So now I'm kind of liking Priest of Titania, double Mystic. No point in using Bosage on the Transformer. Maybe had they played Aetherworks Marvel, it would have been worth taking out. This way, if they have removal, we at least put some more Mystics on the battlefield compared to playing Archerit first. Opponent does have another Discharge, as it turns out. Okay, so opponents one for wanting us with some nice removal spells. And yeah, there's the Aetherworks Marvel with enough energy to activate right away. So we'll see what uh, payoff cards they can potentially hit. They're not instantly making a decision, so hopefully that's good news for us. 
a Drownyard Lurker. So another 7 mana Eldrazi, which definitely implies that they have the uh, land that can tap for double colorless as another way of ramping out Aetherworks Marvel. So we're just gonna play a Lookout. Can probably use Castle. And then play Archroots. Plus maybe another Lookout, we'll see. Okay, so I guess we may as well start here. And play Archroot. So we're currently missing kind of a big card draw engine. Ether Revolt can also deal quite a bit of damage. And yeah, enough to take out Archdruid since they enabled Revolt. So now they got to deal 3 damage basically. And now yeah, Ether Revolt is slowly gonna take out all of her creatures. So this is gonna hurt. Opponent also close to activating Marvel once again. For now take damage from the Lurker, find another Archdruid. But it's unlikely to survive with Aether Vault on the battlefield. But uh, probably still worth a shot. So again, use Castle. And just empty out our hand. Alright, everything is on the battlefield. We'll see if our opponent can clear the Archdruid. Just an attack for seven. Can take it. And land of the top, so not a payoff we were hoping for. So if I were to attack with everyone, of course Archroot can't attack because it dies to the Raptor with first strike damage. Then we're still only getting in for 10 damage. Which isn't really enough. And we would lose two creatures. So I think we just pass a turn, maybe try to block the Lurker. And then hope to find a payoff card. Ether Hub now only deals one damage, so not enough to take out the Archroot. Goes face. And yeah, we have to make some blocks. Although if our opponent loses a creature, they also get an energy from Marvel. And then it's going to be with Revolt enabled. So I might have to just chum block here instead of uh, trying to trade for the Lurker, otherwise we just lose too much. And then maybe with a lucky top deck we can still win next turn. Warmasters, not a bad one. So I'm probably tapping the Archroot here. Activate Castle. Play Warmaster. Activate. And then, if I were to attack with everyone, what happens? Opponent's got two blocks. Yeah, that could be lethal. So our opponent falls to two, but they do get to trigger Aether Revolt twice. And that's just going to be game here. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't have a one drop, but we do have a Priest of Titania and ways to make tokens, so I'll keep. If they take out the Priest right away, then we might stumble a bit. But hopefully we'll find a third land for Archrood. Facing what could be an Eldrazi deck. So those typically don't have a lot of removal. Never mind, could be an energy combo deck. Or maybe playing the new 4 mana enchantments to let them uh, play creatures for an energy. Can set up some infinite combos. It's gonna be an Aetherworks Marvel instead, so they still need 4 energy to activate. Alright, so let's make the most out of it here. Can play Warmaster, Priest taps for 2, and then play Archdruid. That seems decent. And 
And then uh, next turn we'll untap with a ton of mana. Hopefully your opponent doesn't get to cast some giant Eldrazi for free. Vessel can be sacrificed, giving them an energy. And yeah, there we see Ulamog, one of the payoffs. Wrath of the Skies, also pretty scary when playing an elf deck. So prefer to avoid that. Finds another servant for now. And plays it. Okay, so should be able to have a pretty nice turn here. So I can start by playing Visionary. Probably want to try to tap Castle at some point, but maybe play this for starters. Make an extra token. Use Castle. Can play Eladamri, although it doesn't really change the top card when we uh, seek with the lookout. But uh, I guess we also have Visionary to draw. I think I'm still happy to play Eladamri. So the goal here is to find a Wirewood Symbiote, pretty much. Can play War Master of the top. Ideally, we can end the game right now. Before they can untap and cast a Wrath. So, Aladamri on top. I can cast, maybe should have just drawn it. I guess we can do so by playing Shepherd. So I change the top card and don't have to waste three mana. Play Lookout. And draw the Forest. And then need to tap Archroot. Still looking for a Wirewood Symbiote, so I'll take a Company. So we can cast Collected Company. Or I can just play Elves and draw. And there's a Symbiote, so that'll untap the Archroot. Giving us a ton of extra mana. Could also cast another company, although, let's see. Yeah, I think we just play the lookout first, draw into the company, and take it from there. So I can uh, play Archdruids. Use Symbiotes. Untap Archdruids. Picking up a lookout. Make a melee mana, and then we can cast Collected Company. If I double activate War Master, how many attackers do we have? Only two, so that's not quite enough for lethal. Find another Symbiote. Alright, so now we should be making enough mana to attack for lethal. If I activate Shepherd, Use another Symbiote, untap Archdruids. Pick up, doesn't matter too much. Could also pick up a tapped creature, but it's not like these are attacking. And then make 18 mana. I can activate War Master uh, twice. Opponent can still maybe chump and survive, since we only have the two attackers here. Just double checking. But yeah, I don't want to overextend into a Wrath of the Skies is the problem. If I attack all out right now, or opponent can chump take 15. So, yeah, I guess uh, I could keep going here. Cast another company first. Archroot helps. Symbiote helps. Alright, so now we can definitely get there. Just untap the Archroot and attack with it now. And that should do it. Otherwise, if we couldn't somehow get there, we might have wanted to keep up a collected company so we can still cast it post sweeper and then um, maybe still get there on the following turn. But of course, ideally, we can just win right now. 
All right, so we get to see this new take on mono green elves in action. And I'm incredibly impressed by Warwood Symbiote. Priest of Titania was great. So overall, the deck certainly improved with Modern Horizons 3. Question is, do the decks backing a lot of cheap removal and board wipes also get better with this new expansion? And if so, how will those compete with elves? But for now, this seems like a solid tier 1.5, maybe tier 2 deck, depending on how the meta shakes out. And uh, of course, it's a deck that people will be able to prepare for by including some more board wipes. So it's never going to be the best deck in the format, just because it is a creature deck at the end of the day. But if people don't respect the elves deck enough, it can certainly steal some games pretty quickly. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.